I had an idea of the big vision. So, you know, that's really what I would encourage you is that you have everything you need inside of you to figure out your own path, to know when you need to take pieces of advice from somebody and go gather information when you need to implement, when you need to change, when you need to shift, when you need to go all in. Um, and we each and every one of us has that knowledge inside of us. And so your journey is not going to look like anyone else's. Welcome to the Women in Podcasting Show. Enjoy inspiring stories, interesting interviews, and powerful strategies from women around the world. Jennifer Hensel spotlights today's top podcasters, new podcasters, and expert guests. Get tips for leveling up your life, gaining visibility, growing your business, monetizing your podcast, and so much more. We invite you to support women in finding their voice and sharing their passion. It's all about women empowering women. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hensel. I'm the host of the Women in Podcasting show. I have an amazing woman podcaster with me today, Katie Kremitzos. Welcome. Hey, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. Now, Katie Kremitzos is the owner and founder of the Women's Meditation Network and recently celebrated 40 million downloads of her podcast. Now, Katie, you have six podcasts, don't you? I do. Yeah. Could you tell us what those are? Uh, so my original podcast was called uh, Meditation for Women. Very basic. Tells it what it is. Uh, after that, I launched uh, Sleep Meditation for Women. Shortly after that, I launched Morning Meditation for Women. And then came my three sound shows. So I have Sleep Sounds Meditation for Women. Um Water and nature sounds, meditate all. If you look me up, it's all meditation for women because they're all categorized by that, you know, have that in their title. So, water and nature sounds. And then my most recent is ambient sounds and ASMR. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I need, to, I knew of the other ones. I didn't know of the most recent one. That's an incredible addition to your selection. Yeah. Thank you. So, could you tell us the beginning of your entrepreneurial and podcasting journey? Oh, boy. Okay. So, in this moment, we are in 2022. Back in 2009, I uh, quit my job, my day job, to help my then boyfriend, now husband, run a local entrepreneurs association called Tampa Bay Business Owners. It's much like a chamber of commerce, but for business owners. And so um, we were basically putting on events, bringing entrepreneurs together, uh, putting on education. And we did anything over all of those years, we did anywhere from two to 15 events a month. <laughs> so that was amazing. It was awesome. It was my first really, you know, jump into this entrepreneurial life that coming from corporate was very, very scary. And somewhere along that path, I just fell in love with and became obsessed with entrepreneurship about this idea of being able to create something that others found value in and allowing that whole experience to actually create a lifestyle that you really wanted, one that could be 1000% directed and created by you, one that could have an impact on the world. I just loved that concept. But here I was, uh, my husband and I co-owned that company. We, um, he was a majority owner. Um, absolutely the visionary and, and the organizer and creator. I was the operator behind the scenes. And, you know, towards, you know, mid journey, I was discovering this like leadership quality in me. I really enjoyed that. And I really felt a craving to do something on my own. And so one of these education sessions that we put on um, in mid 2013 was about podcasting. And we had one guy come in um, and talk about podcasting and uh, both of our minds were just blown. We were like, wow, we do so much work to, to get a hundred people at this event so we can all share this information and connect. And that dude puts out an episode and he gets 5,000 downloads within the first week. Like 5,000 people are listening. Like it, the scale of it just blew both of our minds for different reasons. And so... Fast forward just a few months, I launched Biz Women Rock in February of 2014, which was my first podcast. 
um, we both sort of like put our energy into it because it was like something new. We were both still running that business. And so here I was starting this podcast and, um, and I started Biz Women Rock. The purpose of it was just to interview really amazing business women. I could sort of tell, help them tell their stories from all these different angles. We could all learn together, right? Um, and it took me a while to figure out what the heck that actually was for me and how I could organize it, how I could make it a business. But, you know, it, into the journey, I finally made a business out of what that was. And so from 2000, from early 2014 until the end of 2019, so literally like a month or two shy of six years, that was my business. Um, I was a, um, a business coach and strategist. Women listen to my podcasts. I learned that, oh, wait, they're not just coming to listen to the person I'm interviewing. They're coming to listen to me and my interactions. They're coming to get to know me. I had a very um, active and big Facebook group um, and very big and active Facebook page. So like all of these things intermingled. I provided masterminds. I provided one-on-one -on -one coaching. I provided, you know, uh, one-off workshops, uh, courses, uh, memberships. I mean, that whole business model. So that was amazing. And I loved it. It was incredibly intense. Within that time, I had our first daughter. And so I was like figuring out how to do this business and baby thing and got into a really good groove. And then January 2018 happened and I was getting really excited. My, you know, I was, I had felt like I had, I had just hit like my first six figure year, I think like my first hundred thousand. And that was like a big, big deal. And I felt like, okay, I, I'm getting this. Like it's starting to make sense. I'm starting to like figure it out. And I had really big goals to triple business that year. And I knew exactly what programs I'd launch. I knew exactly who would be in them. Like I knew my community so intimately by that point that I was like, I, I got this. Um, and so that January, I go to like a CEO retreat for myself just to kind of like plan out the year, kind of officially put it on paper, make it official. And within that planning session, I sort of had this one-off idea to do a, a podcast for offering meditation for women. And I came back and I'm telling Chris, my husband, about everything that I'm going to do, all these other things. And I mentioned this kind of one-off idea and he just sort of hit the floor. He's like, dude, you need to do that. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And of course I didn't do anything with it because it didn't really fit the model. It was really like this outlier in, the, in my business model at that point. So a couple months pass. It's now April. Business is zooming along. It is absolutely hitting, if not exceeding, those goals that I had been that I had for Q1. Right? It's like kicking butt. Everything's about to come out to launch for Q2 and Q3, and it's April, and we find out we're pregnant with our second. And Mama's out there. You will understand me when I say, within a heartbeat, I knew I didn't want that business anymore which was so weird because literally like a week prior, like it was all good. Right. So I just knew it didn't feel good anymore. I knew that I was entering a season with, I was about to enter a season with a newborn and a toddler. And I knew I did not want to show up at meetings. <laughs> I didn't want to, even though I knew my community would be incredibly, uh, cause I had already, you know, had my, my older girl, I'd already raised her, you know, for a few years within that system. I knew my community would be very forgiving and I'd be able to figure it out, but it just didn't feel good anymore. I wanted time freedom and I wanted something else. And I didn't really know what that was. So, so here I am over the next couple of months, just sort of sitting in this quiet space, like sort of standing in the silence, as my husband would say, and he and I would go on walks every single day. One day I'd be like, I'm superwoman. I can make this happen. I'm going to figure it out. I can still, I'm going to, I'm going to have a million dollar business. It's good. Come on. And in the next day I'd be like, I'm done. I'm going to be a mom. That's what I'm going to do. Enough with this business stuff, enough with this podcasting stuff. And uh, during one of those talks, after I had vented, Chris said, well, what about that meditation idea? And I was like, well, what about it? And he's like, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> and that planted the seed for the Women's Meditation Network because all of a sudden I had something that was interesting that I could, like a future I could live into and that felt really good and full of possibilities. 
brought up an enormous amount of fear because I did not, nor do I now, have any certificates in any particular school of meditation. I had never really formally given a public meditation before. Like I, I just was a meditator. Like I was a consumer of meditation. So, uh, but the more that we brainstormed it out, the more it made sense. I was like, yeah, I could totally, like, this is really my next iteration of the work I want to do in the world with women. Like, you know, here I am dealing with women entrepreneurs, but, you know, the more and more I coach, the more and more I realize that there's so much interpersonal, like personal stuff going on inside that keeps us from our business goals. Right. And that's the part that I wanted to have an impact on. Like, so many of my coaching calls were very therapeutic in a lot of senses, in the sense of like, we really had to deal with money blocks and, and, you know, all the stories of I'm not good enough and how dare I. And like, there's so much of that foundational gunk that we have experienced. Um, and it's not just all bad stuff. It's all like these opportunities for growth. So anyway, so I knew that if I could write meditations that were not, you know, let me teach you how to meditate. But they were like love poems of you are enough. You are extraordinary. You have everything you need within you to live a life that you love. Like if I could write those meditations, then I could shift from making an impact on, you know, dozens or hundreds or thousands of people. And I could actually move into a space where I'm impacting so intimately a woman as she, this one woman listens to my meditations and experiences that I could really help thousands, millions, possibly billions. Like that felt really good. So then I did like, you know, what we all have to do is like, put your money where your mouth is. Let's do it. That's a great idea, but like, let's do it. So I launched the, that first show meditation for women in July of 2018 for, and for about a year and a half, I sort of balanced or managed, I should say the old biz women rock. I kind of scaled down that started scaling down that business offering only one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching. So I managed that business. I managed it, meditation for women, that podcast. I had went from one baby to two babies <laughs> and for that time. So eventually, you know, end of 2019 came around and I finally set Biz Women a Rock to sleep, set it to rest, and then was able to put my full-time efforts into mothering and this one podcast. And that's why since 2020, um, one of the reasons why since 2020, I've went gone from one podcast to five and I'm able to sort of like work at a higher speed um, because I, I was able to completely let that go. So that brings us to now. Oh, that's so amazing. Wow. Wow. And, and it's so, so important. You know, I, for many years, I had a side gig and I, I was a part-time entrepreneur while I was doing my full-time gig Yeah, and, and I had all the skills, but what was holding me back was that mindset and heart stuff that you were talking about. Yeah. It's so important. It's actually, it's something where we think, oh yes, I'll put that off, but no, it's actually the most important thing that you need to do first. So these are amazing tools for any, any woman listening right now, go and listen to these podcasts because it can help you in every aspect of your life, business, podcasting, life, everything. And in the, you know, in the women's meditation network season journey, I, was very clear because it was very scary. Like, you know, I'll talk real numbers here. That podcast, Biz Women Rock, averaged about 5,000 downloads a month, right? Which is very respectful, respectable, not huge, but respectable, fed a very thriving business for me, very prosper prosperous business. And, uh, and, and so here I was on the threshold of Women's Meditation Network knowing, well, if I don't want to offer one-on-one -on -one packages that allow me to make revenue right away, and I want to have a time freedom business that, you know, is, is a completely different business model, that's terrifying to me because that actually, actually requires a hell of a lot more listeners. <laughs> and I had never done that before. That seemed way impossible. And now fast forward, here we are, and you, we average across the network about 4 million downloads every single month. So, it, so you want to talk about the mindset. Like I was really clear at the beginning, like I, I'm allowed to have fear, but I have to work on the mind first. Like my work equally as important as the meditation I write or the work I'm doing with my producer, with the music, the, 
you know, the organizing of whatever, the launching of a new show. Equally, if not actually more importantly, is where am I in my head and what what do I believe is possible? Because if you would have asked me this even last year or definitely three years ago, I would have said there's no way. There's no way that is absolutely impossible for me to reach that many people. No, not that many people are going to listen to my show. That is so incredible. Those are incredible numbers. I mean, thank you. (laughs) That is amazing. So now, so that everybody knows you're also the wife of Chris Kermitsos, the founder of PodFest. Yeah. And we are so thrilled to have you on the methods for monetizing your podcast in the women in podcasting track in PodFest. And you're going to be talking about monetizing your podcast in that one. So do you have any tips then how you've done this, how you've grown your podcast for the numbers? Those are incredible numbers. And then also, could you tell us a little bit about how you monetize? Yeah. Um, Oh boy. So my uh, kind of starter business model, I would say, or like my basic business model, it definitely branches off in a, a couple of creative ways, is a very traditional broadcast advertising model. I, with the numbers that I have, it makes sense to sort of have traditional advertisers who pay X amount of dollars per CPM and they book a certain, you know, for a pre roll ad on my show for a certain amount of time. I do dynamic ad insertion, which means that they're buying. X amount of downloads versus X amount of shows because their pot, their adver- their advertisement in the beginning goes to every single meditation that I've ever done in that particular feed, which makes sense because if you think about what meditations you listen to, I have so many people who that's the meditation that they listen to to help them go to sleep or like that's their favorite one based on fear. So like there's n- these are they're truly evergreen episodes. So so that makes sense for the advertiser. So my advertising model or my model is. Um, is very basically like a traditional advertising model, which again, relies on numbers to make sense. Now, um, since then, uh, a couple other really great things that I've done is I've been able to, I, I got really clear in the beginning that my actual, my product is the actual episode. It is the meditation. The, the meditation itself, it is an evergreen product. And so the question then became, well, where else can I put this so people can access it and ideally pay for it. So I actually do a couple of things. I put those meditations on other meditation platforms um, and I get paid for that. So a lot of times it's like people are donating on different uh, meditation apps or donating to me or the app itself then pays me as a, a contributor. So that's been one really great way. And then I also do meditation bundles. So again, the meditation itself is a product. So I'm constantly thinking like, okay, well, how can I bundle 20 of them together under, okay, I've got, do I have 20 all around like self-love? Cool. I have a self-love bundle. Right now, currently I have like four bundles. I have like a mom's meditation bundle that, you know, everything in there is for moms. Um, I have a coronavirus meditation bundle. I have a stress relief bundle and I have a sleep, a peaceful sleep bundle. So there's so much room to expand on that because there's constant content coming out that I can, you know, organize and bundle in different ways. So people don't have to like search through the library. They can just say like, dude, I need, I need the sleep one, or I'm really stressed about COVID right now. So I need to hear all of those meditations. So that's been another way. Um, And then, um, uh, and then I have subscriptions. So I have like ad-free subscription uh, you know, opportunities for people to do. So if they don't want to, most of us don't want to listen to ads in the beginning of our meditation. Many people do, but you know, it's, so there's a lot of people who are like, no, I'll just pay whatever to subscribe. So I don't have to worry about, you know, listening to the ads up front. Oh, that is brilliant. So many brilliant things you're putting in place. That's just incredible. I love it. And what a beautiful example of using your own knowledge and expertise and from your heart creating a product, being a creator and yeah. monetizing that. That's so inspiring. That's so inspiring. Well, to me, it has to line up with like, uh, you know, making money for me is the relationship that I choose to be a part of to get what I believe is valuable into the hands of other women who need it. And the numbers tell me they need it. So, okay. So I, uh, you know, it's this, um, because believe me, as you can probably hear, I've had to deal with my own money blocks over all of these years, but it's been very much like, you know, giving and receiving like your breath, right? So you have, you have to breathe out and give, 
but at some point you got to breathe in and receive and, and money is like that. So it's like, I can breathe out and give, 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 and I am happy and grateful to receive. Um, and so that is definitely a lesson I have learned, uh, over all of these years. Oh, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. So, so are, these are guided meditations, right? So out of the six shows, the three are written and guided by me. The other three are sounds only shows. So they're actually curated sounds that I have um, under those specific, um, you know, the water, nature, the ambient sounds, um, you know, the sleep sounds, things like that. So there's actually no guidance, no nothing. People just want to, and those are longer episodes. So people just want to click play and let, let it play behind, you know, in the background while they're working or while they, you know, are going to sleep, anything like that. But the other three um, and coming out the fourth one and fifth one are all um, on that side are all written and, and guided. Oh, that's amazing. So you, you spend time writing a lot. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, a giant chunk of my time, probably one to two weeks of my month of my working month are spent writing content. So, um, so right now, obviously like mostly, you know, written content for the three shows that I currently have. And then those next two shows that I was just talking about that are coming out are actually not voiced by me, but I write them. So there's super simple scripts, but I'm able to write and have them be really powerful. And then I have, um, I have a, an amazing voice artist who voices all of those and gets to infuse her love into all the words. Oh, wow. That's amazing. What an amazing business you have. It just sounds like the dream business for any <laughs> mom or woman out there. But so this is amazing. So where can people find about, well, actually tell us a little bit about the Women's Meditation Network. Yeah. So, um, so if you go to women's meditation network.com, that's, uh, right now, you know, the house where you could find all of these podcasts. Um, or if you are already in your podcast player that you're listening to now, just go in the search bar and type in meditation for women. And because that tagline is in every single one of my titles, you will see all of my shows come up and you could just subscribe or follow to any one of those. But, um, but yeah, that, you know, the, the mission of the women's meditation network is, is beyond the meditation itself. It's really just to be able to offer um, products, meditations, supporting, you know, products, things like that, that can help women have those external benefits of feeling more calm, getting better sleep. Like that's what I'm going to tell you. And it will absolutely happen. Less stress, less anxiety, better sleep, feel more, you know, calm, cool, collected. But really deeper than that, these meditations are meant to really help you find the stillness so you can hear yourself, your true self, your intuition that is telling you exactly where to go in this life and exactly how to create the kind of life and world that you really want to live. Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to go get the sleep one right now. <laughs> there you go. Yes, that's wonderful. So now I'm so excited we are just a few weeks away now from coming down to Florida to see you live and in person IRL Ooh. in real life. That's so exciting. So PodFest is happening from May 26th through May 29th. Mm -hmm. And our panel, the Women in Podcasting Track is on the Thursday, which is the 24th. Yeah. And your panel that you're on, the Monetizing Your Podcast, is at 345. And so if anybody wants to join us live and in person, we get to meet people face to face that we've been online friends with for many years. It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be one of the first face to face events that a lot of people are at yeah. since the beginning of the pandemic. Right. So it's going to be a real um, family. You guys create the most beautiful family community culture. I mean, I just can't think of another community that is so close and supportive of each other. It's just really amazing to see. So if anybody is listening and you want to join us, you can get 20% off your tickets with a link in the show notes, and you can get all the links to Katie's wonderful podcasts in the show notes at womenofpodcasting.show. So Katie, is there anything else you want to add while we close our show today? Um, I don't know, you know, for the women podcasters or soon to be podcasters who are listening, uh, you know, my, I think the ultimate flag that I love carrying is that this journey is really yours to create. I had so many people in this particular, you know, podcast transition of mine four years ago, just look at me with like these be bewildered eyes going, why would you give up something that's already successful? Why would you not just keep building on that? Why are you going into a space you don't know anything about? 
why are you like, I don't understand this, Katie, who are like, I don't recognize your voice <laughs> on the meditation versus this really upbeat, vibrant voice on Biz Women Rock. And, and they all had valid points. Um, and yet it was my duty to just be still and really follow the path that I knew. And I, by the way, I didn't always know <laughs> the, you know, the, the next couple of steps, but I would know enough to know the next baby step. And I had an idea of the big vision. So, you know, that's really what I would encourage you is that you have everything you need inside of you to figure out your own path, to know when you need to take pieces of advice from somebody and go gather information, when you need to implement, when you need to change, when you need to shift, when you need to go all in. Um, and we each and every one of us has that knowledge inside of us. And so your journey is not going to look like anyone else's. My journey right now even within this space of meditation does not look like anyone else is in this space. So I find myself, um, you know, really gravitating to other people who have built networks and it doesn't matter what the topic is. Like they, they're who I want to be around and to learn from and to share ideas with. And so it's, it's that kind of a thing. So, so just, you know, follow your intuition, follow your gut even if you fl fall flat on your face, like you've learned something for the next step that you need to go on, you know? Oh, that's so beautiful. You either earn or you learn, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. But I, I just love that advice that you gave because podcasting is so beautiful that way that you, you can't really make a mistake. And if you do make a mistake, then it's just your next step in your yeah. journey. And also podcasting can help you be more confident and you know, the more you are, you, the more successful you're going to be, the more mm -hmm. you're, you're our authentic self. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, Katie. Thanks yeah. for being here. Thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate it. Such a pleasure. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.